Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use a 10-stop ND filter for long exposure photography. In this video, I'll be using this 10-stop ND filter from Ice Optical Glass. I have no affiliation at all with the company. Over the years, many of you have complained to me about the high price of ND filters. So what I did is I went to Amazon and I looked for all the reasonably priced 10-stop ND filters that were highly rated and I found this filter. I bought it myself. It cost less than $30 and we're going to check it out and see how good it actually is. When using a 10-stop ND filter, you'll need to use a tripod. So step one, mount your camera on the tripod and with the filter off, compose the scene the way you'd like it. For today, I'm using my Nikon D850 and the Nikon 24-70 f2.8 lens. Step two, put your camera in aperture priority mode and live view mode. So you're actually viewing the scene on the back of the camera. Today, I have my camera set to ISO 64, with an aperture of f11. If you're using a camera with an optical viewfinder, you're going to have to be careful that no extraneous light gets in through the viewfinder. If any extraneous light gets in through the viewfinder, you'll, it will ruin the picture and you'll get a green or purple color cast to your image. My Nikon D850 has a little lever on the side of the viewfinder that I could slide over and it covers the viewfinder so no light will get in there. If your camera doesn't have that feature, simply get a dark multi-fiber cloth and drape it over the back of the viewfinder so no light will get in. If you're using a mirrorless or any camera with an electronic viewfinder, you don't have to worry about this because no light will get in through that type of viewfinder. Next, take an image with the filter off, then chimp the shot and make sure that you have exposure and focus correct for the scene. On my Nikon D850, when I'm in live view mode, all I need to do is touch the back LCD panel and my camera will focus on that point and take a shot. So I'm just going to touch the screen on the grain silo back there and take a shot. Then I'm going to inspect the shot and make sure that it's focused, exposed properly, and I like the composition. Once you're satisfied with the photo with the filter off, put the filter on. Just be very careful that you don't adjust zoom or any of the other settings on your camera while you're screwing the filter on. Once you have the filter on, take a shot with the filter on. Now and again with my Nikon D850 I just need to touch the back LCD panel and take a photo. Now it's giving me a 30 second exposure. Most cameras the longest exposure you'll be able to get is 30 seconds. If when I chimp this shot, if it looks underexposed, then that means I need an exposure longer than 30 seconds. And in those instances, what I'll need to do is put the camera in manual mode. I'll have to dial in that F8 or F11 and ISO 64 settings that I had in aperture priority mode. And then I'll need to use an app to determine what the shutter speed will be. The app I use is ND Timer. With ND Timer, I simply put in the shutter speed with the filter off. And so you'll, that's why you take those images with the filter off. Just look back at them and see what shutter speed your camera used. Dial the shutter speed into ND Timer. And then uh, dial in what type of filter you're using. In this case, we're using a 10-stop ND filter. And then ND timer will tell you how long of a shutter speed you'll need. You'll need to put your camera in manual mode again, dial in that F11 in my case in ISO 64, and then put the camera in bulb mode for shutter. With bulb mode, you hold in the shutter button for the duration of the exposure. ND timer has a little stopwatch feature on it, so you would press the shutter and press the stopwatch at the same time, and then it will tell you when to let go of the shutter button. Now, you may want to be careful about inducing any camera shake 
when you press in the shutter like that. So you may want to use a cable release or some type of remote release uh, so that you're not touching the camera at all. Now, that really, that's all there is to it. It's starting to rain a little bit, so I don't want my gear to get too wet. So we're going to pack up and we're going to head to the studio and we're going to load these uh, images onto the computer. We're going to see what they look like and we're going to see how well this ice filter uh, actually did. All right, we're in the studio and I have the images loaded into Lightroom. But before we get into them, I just want to talk about something very important. I left uh, something out that I wanted to mention during the demonstration. I must apologize. I was really distracted. I'm not very comfortable in front of the camera. And I hope the more I do this, the more comfortable I'll become and the better my presentations will be. But while I was doing this about partway through, uh, to my left, there was a woman taking a video of me doing my video. And it was really distracting to me. Also, towards the end, it started to rain lightly, although you can't really notice it in the video. It was uh, starting to rain. So I kind of was rushing to get everything wrapped up so we could get the gear uh, safely in the car. In doing all that, I left something very important out. Uh, you may find uh, if your scene is very dark, or your subject is dark. And this is particularly true if you're using a DSLR. You may find that with the filter on your camera that your camera will not be able to focus. If that is happening to you, what you'll need to do is with the filter off, focus on your subject, then put your camera in manual focus mode, and then carefully screw on the ND filter. Just be careful that you're not moving focus or moving zoom or any other settings on the camera for that matter. And then once you have that ND filter on and your camera's in manual focus mode, you could take the shot and your camera won't try to achieve focus because it's in manual focus mode and you have it focused where you want it to be. And again, if it wasn't clear in the video, if you find that your 30 second exposure, let's say you're getting a 30 second exposure and it's still underexposed, well then you're going to have to use the app. I use the app ND Timer. There's many out there. Uh, use an application for your smartphone uh, to tell you what shutter speed you need to use. And you'll need to put your camera in manual mode. You'll need to dial in the f-stop and ISO that you used when you took the shot without the filter on and then take note of what shutter speed the camera gave you when you took the image without the filter on then in the app that you're using you'll need to dial in that shutter speed and the type of ND filter you're using in this case I was using a 10 stop ND filter and then the app will tell you how long of a shutter speed you're going to need and I mentioned that you'll have to put your camera in bulb mode so in manual mode, uh, just dial the shutter speed and one click past 30 seconds on most cameras will be bulb mode. And with bulb mode, it keeps the shutter open as long as you're pressing in the shutter button. And I mentioned you're going to need a cable release or you should use a cable release or some type of remote release that will work with bulb mode so that you're keeping that shutter open as long as it needs to be open for the exposure you're getting. Now, because I was so herky-jerky in the video and I wasn't very smooth and I left these parts out, uh, in the description below this video will be a link to my website and I'll have step-by-step -step instructions written out. Uh, you could print those out and hopefully that'll help you uh, better do a long exposure um, photography with a 10-stop or even more ND filter. Now. As far as the images themselves, I'm pretty satisfied with them. This is the image that I took without the filter on. It came out to be 1 13th of a second. And again, I used a, a f-stop of 11 and an ISO of 64. This is the image with the ND filter. And you can see how the water got smoothed out and the clouds are blurred. This came out at 30 seconds in f11. And actually, this was slightly underexposed. This is the instance where I probably should have uh, used the, uh, the time, you know, put my camera manual mode, dialed in ISO 64, F11, 
and then put it in bulb mode for the uh, uh, shutter speed and then used ND timer or any other app for that matter to tell me how long of a shutter speed I needed to use. Now I did add half a stop of exposure to get it to look like more like this image. I just, I processed these individually. I didn't process one and copy it to the other. So it's processed individually. And it actually isn't quite 10 stops uh, if you figured it out. Um, that is probably because of a, a couple reasons. First of all, the light was varying considerably. Uh, it was a little bit breezy and the clouds were moving and thicker clouds were moving in front of the sun and then thinner clouds. So the light changed considerably uh, while I was standing there. Also, uh, I use spot metering mode on my camera. So wherever I touched on my LCD screen, not only did it use that point to achieve focus, it also used that point that spot to uh, determine exposure. I probably didn't touch in the exact same spot between these two shots. For example, uh, on this shot, I may have um, touched like on the red uh, door over here. And then on this shot, I may have touched on the white part of the door. So I would have got two different exposures with a filter off. With the filter on, it's not exactly 10 stops, so that's why that discrepancy, plus it was underexposed to begin with. It needed a longer exposure uh, than 30 seconds. So that accounts for that. But overall, this ice filter actually did a really nice job. Now, I, I processed it independently, and I didn't touch white balance at all. White balance is as shot, and on the image without the ND filter, its white balance was as shot. And you can see that between the two, uh, there's really fine. I mean, it came out perfect. So I'm pretty impressed. Uh, like I mentioned, this uh, filter costs less than $30. There'll be a link for it in the description below this video. My lens takes 77 millimeter filters, so the link will be for that 77 millimeter filter. If you choose to purchase it or any other filter for that matter, Make sure that you choose the size filter that fits your lens. Um, all right, I've had people complain to me before that they used a link to buy a filter and they just used my link and it wasn't the right size. Make sure you get the size filter for your lens. Now, real quick, just another little note about this filter. I mean, yeah, it was less than $30 and it has nice white balance. That's my main complaint with neutral density filters is sometimes they're, they're really warm. They, they give a brown kind of cast to your image. Some give a kind of a bluish cast to your image. This one is really perfect. It does a nice job. But it probably doesn't have like the uh, coatings on it so that it's scratch resistant. And it probably doesn't have the coatings on it that will help resist like lens flare or, you know, anything with light coming in on an angle. Uh, so it it's not probably going to have all those extra added um, expensive features that you probably saw or probably will enjoy if you uh, buy a filter that's well over $100, which most ND filters, quality ND filters run. So I just wanted to put that out there and make sure that you uh, understand that. So you're probably going to have to treat this filter a little better. Now, uh, one other feature, one other thing we'll talk about, and then I'm going to wrap it up. As far as the filter itself, it was well constructed. It felt like it was aluminum. It wasn't plastic. And it seemed like it was well made. But you will notice that there's a little vignetting, just a little bit. So if you look at this one, see how bright it is over in the corners? Now, of course, the clouds move, but it's a little darker, right? So there is a little vignetting. That isn't really because the filter's crap or anything like that. That's because I shot at 24 millimeters. Even though it's kind of a thin filter, it's still the edges of the filter got in the shot. Um, when I was researching the filters and I was reading the comments, a lot of people were complaining about whatever filter they were talking about that it vignetted. The filter sucks. It vignetted, and they look. They shot at ten millimeters. Well, of course it's going to vignette, all right, <laughs> because that's such a wide angle. If you really want to shoot at a super wide angle, particularly wide angles wider than 24. What you should do 
is buy a filter that's bigger than your lens, all right? So if your lens filter threads are 72 millimeters, let's say, buy the in like an 82 millimeter filter and then buy a step up ring. So you're buying a 72 to 82 millimeter step up ring. That way the filter is bigger than the lens and hopefully it if it does vignette, it vignettes at least less. Now if you do encounter vignetting like I am here, all you need to do is go to lens corrections and right here at the very bottom when you're under the profile tab, you see vignetting. This, if you move it to the right, you could start removing that vignetting, see? So just push that to the right and you'll at least minimize that vignetting. So um, if I would have zoomed in even to probably 30 millimeters, this vignetting probably would have been gone. So uh, be aware of that. I just wanted to put that out there and make sure you knew about it. Now again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website where I'll have step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this. And I'll also have a link to Amazon. It's my affiliate link. I am an Amazon affiliate. And if you purchase this filter, I would make a commission on it. I just want to have full disclosure. I don't have any uh, relationship at all with the company that makes this filter. I've never even heard of them until I purchased it from Amazon. So that's it. I hope that helps you uh, do long exposure photography with neutral density filters. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>